What's up YouTube? Franchise Sports TV back again with another video. I'm back again with another top five players from every team of all time, plus the best player. I've been around the NBA landscape. I've been to the Lakers, Suns, Bucks, Spurs, Heat, Nuggets, Hornets, Magic, Nets, Knicks, and I think that's it so far that I've been around. I've been to 10 different cities so far. And now I'm on the road to Chicago. And I thought Chicago would be a knockout of the park to actually uh, list all top five, but it's a little bit harder than what it seemed. But with no further ado, the way I rank these is based on what they have done for the team, their influence on the team, also their individual influence on the NBA as well. So the center position was kind of hard to pick because they had too many picks. But sad to say, I had to pick them. And starting at center, I could have picked them for the San Antonio Spurs, but I didn't. But starting at center, Artis Gilmore. Now, Artis Gilmore played on the Chicago Wolves from 1976 to 1982. He was fresh off the ABA, uh, coming out of the ABA, playing for the Kentucky Colonels. Now, Artis Gilmore may not have won anything in the NBA, but during his Bulls tenure, tenure he was a all-star. Six-time All-Star, um, half of them with the Bulls, and I think it was some with the Spurs, and that was pretty much it. Actually, he played with the Bulls in 1987 as well. Uh, he is a Basketball Hall of Famer, of course. So it's not, let's not forget about that. But he was part of that uh, 1976 ABA dispensal draft. He was chosen first overall by the Chicago Bulls, signing. 1.1 million over three years, damn. But his first season, he led the team in scoring and rebounds and blocks, and also hold the Bulls' opponents to a league best 98 point points per game. Um, he scored his NBA career high 42 points and grabbed 15 rebounds and nine assists in a win over the Kansas City now Sacramento Kings. Uh, he did get the Bulls to the 1997 playoffs, but they lost 2-1 to the eventual champion Trailblazers as well. Uh, his five seasons with the Chicago Bulls averaged 19.3 points per game and 11 rebounds. And eventually he was traded to the San Antonio Spurs in 1982 for Dave Posey. Um, pretty much uh, when he went to San Antonio, he became pretty much he, he, he was going on the downside of his career. But he did come back to the Bulls for one season to play with Jordan. I don't know how long that was really was. Let's see here. His one season, 1987-88, he played 24 games, 23. But only averaged 4.2 points per game. Uh, 2.6 rebounds. He's pretty much on the downside of his career before he's released. He played one more season with Boston. But uh, it didn't go as well. So, um, during his two years in the playoffs with Chicago, uh, he averaged 18.7 in 1977 and 1981 averaging 18.0 points per game and 11 rebounds. So starting at the center is Artis Gilmore. Now the power forward position, it was a little bit difficult to figure that out. I had choices of uh, some people consider Tony to coach to be uh, us uh, power forward. He had Horace Grant, Charles Oakley, and one Dennis Rodman, but I had to go with Dennis Rodman. Uh, do I really need to read anything about Dennis Rodman? You guys know who Dennis Rodman is. You guys know who he is. He is very crucial in the, uh, as we all know, this is for the kids who don't know. He was very crucial in the uh, Bulls second repeat. Um, he is a five time champion, two with Detroit, three with the Bulls. Uh, he didn't get any all-stars with the Bulls. 
He did get a third team. He did not get a third team, though. And he did not get an NBA Defensive Player of the Year with him. He got him with the uh, Spurs. Not Spurs. Sorry. Pistons. I got Spurs in the brain. He didn't really get too many accomplishments with the Bulls. But like I said, he was very crucial uh, for the Bulls as he was traded prior to the 95-96 offseason for Will Purdue to fit a large void that he was missing because Horace Grant left the prior season. So, um, so there's, also he is a Hall of Famer as well. And also, he did do this for most of the season. Uh, he was winning rebounder titles. He was, let's see right quick. Um, his years for Chicago, three years for Chicago, he averaged 14.9 rebound then a 16.1 rebound then 15.0 rebound those are highs those are leading season regular season highs now he was down from his previous years in san antonio his highest career average in rebounds was actually with detroit 91 92 at 18.7 rebounds see dennis robin liked a box out, get his core strength, and dig down low and get his rebounds. That's how he got most of his rebounds, too. He wasn't always jumping as well. Uh, even in the playoffs, actually, the players had a little bit more of a letdown, of course. I wouldn't say a letdown, but decrease. But his first, uh, the first championship with the Bulls, he averaged 13.7 rebounds. And he went down to 8.4 and went back up at 11.8 in the 98 finals run. So Dennis Rahm, I had to put Dennis Rahm in the power for it. it was it was kind of close. It was close. It was very close. At the small forward position, not Jimmy Butler, people. Uh, unfortunately, it's the man that's been on the news a little bit too much than more than people probably would like him to be in the news embarrassing himself for the last couple of years his wife has gone crazy and now is dating his uh former teammate son but scotty pippen oh my goodness we know so much about scotty pippen playing on the bulls from 87 to 8 1998 and he did play again for the 2003 2004 season six-time champion seven-time all-star nba all-star game mvp 1994, three-time NBA first team, two-time NBA second team, two-time NBA third team, eight-time NBA all-defensive first team, two-time NBA defensive second team, Steelers leader, also part of the 50th and 75th anniversary, number retired by the Chicago Bulls, and uh, USA Basketball Male Athlete of the Year. His career averages. 16.1 points, 6.4 rebounds, and 5.2 assists. So that's pretty much Scotty Pippen. It's weird that I found out that he never scored over 30 in the playoff game. That is weird. Um, but I never, sometimes I forget that he actually played on the Bulls one more time in the 2003 2004 season. I don't think he did much. And then that time, he's pretty much done. I think he tried to come back in 2008. Playing in Scandinavia, somewhere in Scandinavia, Finnish league. I can't pronounce it, but they call it Topol. I think that was the name. Played two games. Hmm. I think he did. I don't know. He was also an uh, Olympic champion as well. And, uh, I'm not even going to go through all this stuff. He pretty much is. High season with the Bulls, points average. It was the 93-94 season, that's when Michael Jordan was gone already. He averaged 22.0 points per game. That's his highest career average in points. And also steals as well. He averaged 2.9 steals that season. And rebounds as well, 8.7. That's his highest. Uh, I think his highest assist average was 7.0, and that was the 91-92 season. Second championship run. 
But uh, you, get, you do gotta get credit to this guy. It's crazy he's gotten some of the stupid stuff he's been saying. He's crucial in all the Bulls championships, and nobody's not disputing this. And you ain't gonna say Jordan was the absolute. Of course, Jordan needed Pippen, but Pippen really needed Jordan because we've seen for the last two those two years when Jordan was gone, uh, 94-95 season. Nothing. No championship. Oh, 95, Jordy did come back, but it took him a while. But by himself, for the 94 season? Nope. The reason why I'm silent right now Cause do I really need to list the shooting guard, the best shooting guard of all time on the Bulls? Do I really need to announce that? We all know who the best shooting guard to ever played for the Bulls. We all know who it is. Do we? I think we do. It's the goal himself. It's Michael Jordan. I don't need to go through that. <laughs> Anyways, no moving on. Sorry. Moving on, now the point guard. Uh, point guard was actually type of easy. People could say it could have been Guy Rogers because he's one of the uh, first players on the Bulls. But come on now, who are we kidding? His career may have been. Uh, his career is not really cut short, but his prime may have been cut short due to an idiotic coach that know now currently coaches on the New York Knicks but the best point guard to ever play for Chicago Bulls it's not BJ Armstrong nope not Steve Kerr not, no 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 we all know who it is Derrick Rose it's unfortunate Derrick Rose career was cut I keep saying career was cut short his uh prime was cut short because we all know for people who's watching basketball around that time Derrick Rose was something else. He was the MVP 2011, three time All Star, all for the Bulls. First team, all, all, all his prime stats are all for the Bulls, of course. It's unfortunate the way his career has gone due to the uh, knee injuries. Such a humble person. All the stuff he's been through coming up. It's sad to see his career not uh, become what we all thought it was going to come. Because at uh, probably 2011, we thought he would become the face of the league eventually. Maybe out throwing on LeBron. I think they would have beat LeBron in that 2011 Eastern Conference uh, Finals. Oh, shoot. We'll be talking way different. Because that he would have beat a uh, super team. And Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and LeBron. With his best player outside that, probably being jo Joaquin Noah. I don't even know Blue Old Dang was even on there. Even, even, I think he was on that team by that time. I don't even think Jimmy Butler was Jimmy Butler. I don't even think Jimmy Butler was even in the league yet. But, um, yeah. Uh, Derrick Rose was phenomenal in his Chicago years. Um, uh, it's funny, he went back to wearing number 23 for the Memphis Grizzlies. Ironic. Because I think his favorite player growing up was Michael Jordan. And now he's wearing 23 when he's in Memphis. That was his number in college as well in Memphis. But up until, let's say, the injury happened, uh, his first year he got rookie of the year, 16.8. His next year, 20.8. His MVP year, 25.0. Played in. 81 games, averaged a high of 4.1, 7.7 assists. Uh, the season when he tore that ACL, the lockout season, he averaged 21.8. He had a downslide, but he had the most assists ever averaged for his career, 7.9. Uh, he went down 3.4 with the rebounds. But he was never really the same after that, as we all know. Um... He did have a little bump in the uh, 
just a tiny bit in the 2014-15 season. I think that's the season we hit that game winner against Cleveland. 17.7 uh, points per game. Chicago, the next season, 2015-2016 season, he averaged 16.4. So that was his last year in Chicago. And I'm thinking about that 2014-15 season. I barely remember him playing against the Bucks. But Derrick Rose, he has to be the... Um, absolute point guard for the Chicago Bulls you know he never won a championship of course even in let's say the 2011 playoff run they had he averaged 27 points the next year after they averaged 20 well he only played one game in 2010 26 in 2009 19.7 and uh shoot I know this is not about the uh, Bulls, but anything. I didn't know he averaged that much. Again, uh, with the Knicks, he averaged 19.4 points per game in five games with the Knicks in the 21-21 playoffs. And he didn't get one, he didn't get any time. I think he got one game. That was three minutes this past uh, playoff season. But anyways, Derrick Rose, everybody. So rounding it out, let's say that one more time before we log off of here. Starting at the center, Artis Gilmore, Powell Fort, Rodman, Scotty Pippen at small fort, Michael Jordan at the shooting guard, and Derrick Rose at the point guard. And of course, the best player of all time on the Chicago Bulls is no other than the GOAT himself. Uh, shoot, now if you put this team against uh, any other team that I named so far, and uh yeah, i think the bulls if you put this if you put let's say this before i love it if you put all the teams so far I put on there in a pool and get to play against each other who will win i think the bulls are probably edge out a lot of those teams even the lakers teams you know i think my lakers team was pretty much kareem i forgot what my lakers team was at the time I'm sorry I forgot who it was. I forgot it was in a power forward position. I know I had Worthy at the small forward. I know my shooting guard was uh, Kobe and point guard was Magic. But I forgot the power forward position. Hey, did, did I put Will? But anyways, that would probably be the championship right there. The Lakers versus the Bulls. Bulls, Lakers. You know what? I got an idea. That might be a new video. That might be something I might do later on when I get done with this series. But anyways... Tell me what you guys think. Those are my five for the Bulls.